in the last video we saw how we can find the pressure uh, due to a fluid at some depth uh, inside a container so that result was um, uh, the pressure due to a fluid is simply its density multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the depth at which you are finding the pressure now that expression uh, leads to very interesting result and uh, that i'd like to show you let us take a large container of water here so what we can see here let's say this is filled up with some fluid here now let us take a block of wood let's say this uh, thing is filled up with water and let's take a block of wood here or any object for example i'm taking a block of wood here now if you imagine we have some pressure so because we have we have some pressure at this level of water right at this level we have some pressure we also have some pressure at this level i told you that so pressure equals rho g h uh, rho because this is a single fluid water so rho is constant g at the surface of earth is constant at all points so the only variable here is h it is clear that the pressure at this point would be less because h is less as compared to this point because the depth or h is more so clearly the pressure at this point would be higher than the pressure at this point now uh, what is uh, so we also know that the fluid exerts a pressure in all directions so at this point a fluid the fluid would be exerting a pressure in this direction and in this direction also but also most importantly in this direction so we have some pressure being exerted on the block in that direction we also similarly we can see here also the fluid will exert pressure on that direction it will exert a force or pressure in this direction and you also have some pressure on the block due to the fluid in this direction so we it's clear that water would be pushing the block from both the sides but the pressure at this depth is higher because this 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 point is it is at a is at a, a higher depth as compared to this point so because this point is deeper the h is greater so the pressure is greater and therefore the push in that direction is greater than the push in this direction which shows that we have a net unbalanced force in that direction right because we have a higher pressure in that direction it means that we have a higher force in that direction because the area of the block this area and that area uh, are equal right we have taken a, uh, we have taken a cube here uh, obviously we are taking a cube here just for simplicity but these results that we derive would be applicable to any shape and we we'll, we won't get into why uh, we are taking a cube but the simple reason is because of uh, just to be simple so what i mean to show here is that the pressure on in that direction is greater than the pressure in this direction and because the area is same pressure greater pressure means a greater force so we have greater force pushing in that direction as compared to a force that is pushing in this direction and that means we have a net unbalanced force we all know that a net unbalanced force rather a net external unbalanced force causes acceleration we have an we have a net unbalanced external force in that direction so it would cause uh, an acceleration in that direction so the block should be pushed upwards so that is the uh, result that we uh, can predict by using some mathematics and the uh, and the relation that we derived in the last uh, video so using all these results we predict that if we have such a block it would be pushed upwards Uh, due to the pressure difference and how much that pressure difference would be uh, let us try to find that pressure difference here so let's say this depth here is um i'll remove the relation for a moment let's say this depth here is h1 and uh, this depth here is h2 clear so i have h1 h2 and rest the density of this fluid is let's say rho and gravitational uh, acceleration is obviously g now we we'll look at the pressure here the pressure at this height 
at this point would be simply uh, p let's say one because it's h1 i'll call it p1 the pressure at this point would be equal to rho which is a constant g so rho which means density times d g times h1 or the height of the column at this point or the depth of this point here similarly if i find the pressure at this point p2 uh, that is equal to rho the density of the fluid uh, times the gravitational constant uh, gravitational acceleration times h2 or the height of the column uh, at this point or the depth of this point so now i've got the pressure at the, these two points let us try to find the pressure difference the pressure difference would be simply p2 which is greater minus p1 which is less than p2 so p2 equals well rho g h2 minus p1 which is rho g h1 rho g h1 well i can uh, take this rho and g common from both the expressions and let me just write it here what i'm left with is rho g into h2 minus h1 so we can see that the pressure difference is rho g into uh, the larger height of the column minus the height of this smaller column and uh, now what we can further do is we can, we can uh, well, let us see what h2 minus h1 is so this is h2 and this is h1 if we subtract h1 from h2 we are left with this height um, this height here and that is the height of this block so let's say this the height of this block is h so instead of writing h2 minus h1 i can simply write h so uh, let me just modify that to h so instead of writing h2 minus h1 i can simply write that as a, a simple h and h is the height of the object that we're taking so it's the pressure difference is simply rho gh right now um what is the volume of this uh, cube boy, cube here well if we look at the uh, so we, in the last video also we have we've seen that the volume of a cuboid is so the volume of a cuboid equals length into breadth into height and length into breadth uh, okay equals to the base area so the volume of a cuboid is simply the base area a times the height of that object and i can shift this a on the other side and write this as v upon a the volume of the object divided by its base area equals to the height of that object now instead of writing it as rho g h i can substitute v upon a instead of h so let me clear off um, the excess things and only uh, leave the uh, important part so what we are left with here is that first of all uh, volume equals uh, the base area times height and we shifted this area here to get volume of a uh, volume of the object divided by the base area gives us the height of this object on the other side we were uh, looking for the pressure difference on this uh, this block here and we found that the pressure difference equals the density of the fluid times gravitational acceleration times the height of this object here this is the pressure difference okay and h is the height of this ob block here now we this h and this h uh, are the same so instead of writing h here we can write that as v upon a so what we are left with here is pressure difference or the net pressure on this rather the pressure difference equals uh, rho g into v upon a right now this is the pressure difference if we if i shift this a on this side what i get is a into p2 minus p1 i simply simply shifted this a on the on this side and i'm left with only rho g and v okay now um, what i can do is i can multiply a with both the pressures and what i what i get is a p2 minus a p1 equals to rho g v 
Now, what is A P two? Well, P two is the pressure at this um, on this surface, and A is the area of the surface. We know that pressure equals force upon area. If I shift this area on the other side, I get force equals area into pressure, right? So this A P two or the area of the base times pressure at this point gives me the force that is acting on this surface. So I can write that as force two or the force at that is acting in this direction F two. Similarly, A P one is the area of this top surface multiplied the pressure uh, uh, that is acting on the top surface and that is equal to the force that is acting on that surface F one. So I can write that as F one and F two minus F one is simply the net pressure. So let me uh, write obviously because F two is larger than F one. We just saw that. So let the net force would be in that direction. Let us denote that by simple F. So I can write that the pressure, dif the force difference, or the net force is F. F two minus F one, F, and that is equal to rho g v. So what we are finding left here is that the force, net force on this block in the upwards direction. Is equal to the density of the fluid around it, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, and multiplied by the volume of the block. Now let us give the give a name to this force that is acting on the block in the upwards direction, due to the pressure difference exerted by the fluid around it. Such a force is called the buoyant force. Uh, buoyant force. right so the buoyant force on uh, an object equals to the uh, density of that fluid around it uh, times g times v now uh, what we can do is we we know that uh, well the density of any object uh, equals the mass of that object upon its volume if we shift the volume to the other side we get volume into uh, rho equals mass now here what is rho well rho is the, um, the the density of the fluid and if we multiply it with some volume what we get is the mass of the fluid that we can contain in that particular volume again because the density is of the fluid when we multiply the density of the fluid with some volume what we get is the mass of that fluid that can be contained in that volume so we are using the volume of the block This is not the mass of the block because this is not the density of the block. This is the density of the, flu of the fluid. Therefore, m is the mass of uh, the fluid that can be contained inside the volume uh, of this block. Or in other words, when we uh, so we we'll look at another interpretation of this uh, mass, but here this mass represents the volume of water that can be volume of fluid that can be contained in the volume of this block. I'd come. Uh, we'll talk about that more uh, uh, in some time. So now, what I can do is instead of writing, uh, instead of writing, so here uh, I can rewrite the this expression by just rephrasing it, uh, rearranging it. Rho into v into g. Well, rho v, v rho, rho v, same. So instead of writing rho v here, I can write that simply as m, right, from here. So what I get is f into f equals m g h. Now let me interpret this equation here and clarify a few things. F, which is the buoyant force, so F B buoyant force, this force that is pushing upwards, equals to the mass of the fluid that can be contained in this volume. So it's the mass of fluid uh, contained that can be contained in the volume of the uh, block times gravitational acceleration. and uh, right and here we had the block completely immersed but there might be some cases in which the block is half immersed or completely or maybe immersed 10% immersed right so it's only 10% under the fluid so in that case this mass would be the uh, so the volume or the mass would refer to only that section which is immersed right so that is the only that is the basic mathematical part of this and now uh, i'd show you a bit uh, some some demonstrations and then uh, look at what this equation really means physically and how is this equation useful